Africa needs to be built by African. Uh, we need to believe in, in our natural assets that we have, which is the landscape, the minerals, the rich culture. A lot of non-African are profiting from African, you know, resources, but us, we are not because we don't believe in Africa as African. <music> morning still on Ovambo land believe me or not this has been one of the best experience ever and I just want to tell you all that if you ever come to Namibia please try and explore the northern part of Namibia you know the last time I was here I loved it but I, it was just a day but this time I ended up spending like almost 10 days in here oh my goodness this is the Ungula homestead. This is how the Vamba people used to live. And one person decided to, I mean, transform the homestead into a lodge. It's crazy, right? Eh? I mean, people who do something like this are super crazy because there is no tourist attraction in here. But she felt like doing something like this to celebrate his own people so that other people will come and experience their own culture. This is not a show. This is a live homestead where I was born. When you come to Ongula homestead, that is how we live. Hmm. It's not a show set up for the tourists. This is an authentic, it's the first lodge in Ovamboland located in the middle of a village at the homestead. And the idea is to offer authentic village homestead experience and to promote and preserve our culture. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, why are you moving your home? Ah. A lot of youngsters and our kids are growing up in town, but they are missing out on our character. I think the person behind this deserves a round of applause. This is where I slept. You might think that, oh, that's a madhouse. No. If I take you in there, you will definitely be shocked. Daimi. Morning, Maya. Ah, <laughs> I thought you would be sleeping. No, I'm in early bed. Early bed? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're not lying to me? Uh, I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> so I came here with Daimi. Uh-huh. Together with the... the... rest of the team. Yeah, uh, and how's the North Express been? Uh, I think it's been really great. We experienced different, uh, the different cultural activities. Um, I think for me it was the authenticity. It was so authentic. It was very real. Um, I'm a Vambo myself. I belong to the Avambo, Awambo culture, but I've never seen this um, type of activities in depth like that. Wow. So yeah, this was insightful for me. Very insightful. And I think I encourage everybody to have experienced this, even just once in a lifetime. Even once in a lifetime. Yeah. I just read on the internet that the person who owns this is a woman. Yes, it is. Can you believe it? I'm so proud of her. She's empowering the youth. I've seen so many people walking around this place. She employs all those people. I'm proud of her. And, and, and one thing that really shocks me is mm -hmm. the fact that even this is, yeah, this is a lodge, right? Yeah, yeah. But in the day, her house is just right behind yeah, her, yeah. right? So she built a lodge behind her house. Her parents' house. Yeah. That's her parents' house. Yeah. And the house is still in its authentic form, yeah. which I think it's incredible. Yeah. And one thing that really surprised me, the mm -hmm. fact that when she established this lodge, she felt like she needed to educate yeah. or empower the yeah. youth in this yeah. community. With the academy, of course. And that's when she set up an academy. Yeah. The only economy in the rural area is the Shabins. Mm. Then is the only thing that was there at Ongula, nothing else. Then we thought, let's start an academy called Shabin Escape, so that the youth escape Shabins, come to a safe hub, learn a skills. When they go back, they must start running their dressmaking shop or catering businesses, but in a more professional and hygienic way. And I think I'm so I'm so happy that she she also allows um, the guests to you know perusal through her parents house mm. i mean it's private space but she said 
you know guys i want you to have the full-on experience so you can definitely go through and have an actual village tour <laughs> okay. yeah. the one running, the one running. Ah, <laughs> oh, no! Oh, but why would you do that? No! Ah. No, 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 no! no. Come on! You got confused? No, 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 no! no. Ah. This kitchen? Yeah. Hey, I said kitchen, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I, I'm not always gonna eat it. Oh, yeah. Because oh, I drink one big I think. You and who? Yeah. Go and catch your own. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, man. Yeah. I, I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. But, but to be honest, for me, I feel like this is one of the best places I've ever been because I've yeah. been able to enjoy myself mm -hmm. in my own authentic way. Yeah. Listen, I mean, yeah. this is my kind of place. So if you're a village boy and <laughs> you find yourself in the city and you think that you're losing it, yeah. please, my brother, my sister, mm -hmm. choose. I think even yesterday, the conversation we were having about, mm. it's so cool how we were in our element. Yes, we were creating, yeah. but we were having so much fun and it felt so free. It just felt like, you know, so peaceful. We were exactly. really in our element. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell you, choose um, Angula. Village Homestead. Mm. Mm. It, it's a, see, it's a village, you know, and yeah. it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> but when I was growing up, I never knew that in the evening, you have to like sit somewhere and then have meetings. You know, when we came here, we have um, two people in our team that loves having a meeting in here. And they have a meeting in here with alcohol. So if you love alcohol, my brother, this is actually the best place for you. Imagine sitting in here, drinking alcohol, fire is on. Whoa, believe me or not, this is the best experience ever. I don't know how many times I have to say this on this channel and I don't know how many times people have been trying to discourage me from putting Africa on the map. I don't know how hard you're going to try to stop me from telling the positive stories about Africa because anytime I try to preach about the positives of Africa, so many of you come at me, especially Africans, telling me that, yo, Africa is not perfect. And I don't remember the last time I stood in here to say that Africa is perfect. What inspires me to do more of what I do is the fact that Africa got its own challenges, but few Africans are carrying Africa on their back, taking control of their own narrative just to change the Africa that we all know. And this is why I am here to celebrate them. I am here to let you know that people like this exist despite the challenges. The woman that I'm going to celebrate today deserves a round of applause from all of us. Good morning, Madam Hilia. She was born in Namibia, left this country, came back, saw the problems that most of us have been seeing, but she decided to solve the problem in her own way. This is what I stand for. And the best way to clap for her is to hit the like button, subscribe for more stories like this. Good morning, Kenakwapa Modemaya. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. 
you, you know Akwa, but I guess you have many Ghanaian friends then. Yes, I, I grew up, I did my high school uh, with Ghanaian. Wow. Yeah. Were you born and raised in Namibia? Yes, born and bred in Namibia, but I did part of my high school in Cuba, and we were sharing one high school with students from Ghana. How did you end up in Cuba then? Long story, I, with a group of young girls, in 1988, we decided to leave Namibia without the knowledge of our parents. We went to Angola and we were fortunate to be the group of students that were sent to Cuba to complete high school. Hmm. You, you left just like that or you left because of a particular reason? At the age of 15, that particular year, 1988, uh, most of the schools in northern part of the country were being closed in protesting against or in favor of the implementation of the resolution, UN Resolution 435. We wanted as a country to be given an opportunity to conduct a democratic election. And because that was not granted, um, a lot of youth in the country started demonstrating and closing schools. And I read in the church newsletter that all the kids that are crossing into Angola, they are in safe hand and they are being sent to school. And a best friend of mine left earlier and I thought there's no way Monica is going to complete grade 10 earlier than me. I'm also going to join the liberation movement. So we ran away from our parents at the age of 15 and I ended up uh, being sent to Cuba. Wow. How? Because you want to be educated? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. But, uh, you know, I, I just came in here for the first time and I just want to commend you for the great job that you've done in here. This is incredible and uh, someone coming from Ghana, I never knew something like this actually existed here and I know and believe that there are so many Namibians who are going to see this video that don't even know that something like this exists in the northern part of Namibia. At the beginning it was difficult because the, the Ovamboland, the north central region which used to be called Ovamboland, yeah. it was a war zone, uh, there's no animals. So tourists exited Tosha using Obamboland as a drive-through mm. to Kunene or yeah. vice versa. So we started and every tour operator that brings tourists there, they never stop booking us. And in the first year when we started, maybe you get a, a guest one in three months, the whole village is running. Yeah, the guests are there, the guests are there. The road that we have used now, it wasn't there. We used to use a feeder road mm. and we arrows to say this direction, Ombula, this direction. And the cattle herder will come and turn the arrow on the other side <laughs> and then people will get lost in the village. <laughs> but everybody was so helpful in the village. The moment they see the tourists, then they said, no, these are looking for the lodge. And then there's Ombula is that side, Homestead is that side. So that's how we started. When I grew up, when I studied in, in London, I had a lot of friends from West Africa. Mm. One good thing that I like from West African is the culture. They even yeah. send their kids to finish high school first in yeah. Ghana or Nigeria, and then they come back for the university. Why? Because they don't want them to lose out on the culture. Exactly. But as in Namibia, we're losing out on the culture because we're growing up in urban area. Our kids don't come to the village because there's nothing. There's nothing. So Ongula Village Homestead is suitable for the international guests, but also to the Namibian boys and girls that are growing up in town. But when they come back home in December, they are bored. They can come to us and learn how to cook the traditional food, molding pots, riding donkeys. I love this, man. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Woo! Wow. Yeah. I, I swear, this is faster than Mercedes Benz. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because you must smile, we're on YouTube now, my guy. Yeah! <laughs> So this area was big under the, the war area. So this is where they grew and then the, the villages started developing from here. Oh wow. So that's what we do there. So tourists coming to Angola, they are making such a huge difference to the to the young boys and girls in rural area, township, and those living at the outskirts of major national parks. And that's how we, when we started, there were no skills. And we thought, why don't we also start a center so that the young boys and girls that are just sitting at the Shebin, because the only economy in the rural area is the Shebins. Mm. Shebin is the only thing that was there at Ongula, nothing else. Then we thought, let's start an academy called Shebin Escape so that the youth escape Shebins come to a safe hub, learn a skill. We're not saying they shouldn't go back to the Shebin, but when they go back, they must start running their dressmaking shop or catering businesses, but in a more professional and hygienic way. So Ongula Academy started with two programs, hospitality and sewing. So tell me more about this academy. Okay, Homestead Academy, yeah. it was um, established uh, 2019. So now as it's growing, it's also to improve the rural areas people. So they will tend to know that, okay, if I'm go out of school, there's a second chance for me. Hmm. Yes. I want to improve uh, my people's uh, life of living, whereby we have that belief of people saying, I know, um, if I'm to go to school, I want to work in the government. For me, it does not work like that. Wow. For me, is I want to teach them to do something better for themselves and for the next generation to come. Yes. So definitely for me, what I tell them, don't come here to study and pass and go home and tell me you want government job. Create job for others. Yes. A big round of applause, yeah. man. Oh, okay, thank that, you. That, that's so beautiful, man. Mm. How, how do you feel when your students graduate mm. and they start having their own farms? Ish. It's like I created uh, the world for them. Huh? I'll be feeling proud. I can't wait even to go to their farm, visiting their farm, and here comes with a plate of tomato or something like that. So definitely, that's, a, that's what I want. In the next two years, that's what I want to see. I'm even planning in case one of them will not even have, maybe starting capital. Because in agriculture, you don't expect to, people think you need a lot of capital for you to start. By then, it's not like that. You can start with a single chicken, by then in the next two months, it can give you more than what more you than expect. Where we are right now is the clothing production of Homestead um, Schools and Technical Institute, right? Is it an institute or an academy? Yes. It's an academy. It's an academy. And who are you and what you're doing here? I'm Lavinia Kanana. I'm doing clothing production at Homestead Skills and Technical Education Academy. The training is according to NTAE curriculum, but our training is not limited. We are being trained extra mile. They, uh, they look for us visiting instructors, not only the ones that are from our country, visiting instructors like from SA, Philippines, they, then they train us more. It's not limited. If it's about fashion, they, we can do anything. I, I heard um, you guys are designing what you call the, the reusable uh, sanitary pad. Yeah. Uh, are you the one in charge? I'm the one in charge of the group uh, from the construction of the pattern for the sanitary pad until the whole process of sewing, I can do all the tasks with, with the help of the other trainees and our instructors. Uh, th there's this project that you're working on. Um, which is under the team Restoring Girls' Dignity. Yes. Can you tell me more about that? Because our centre is so well equipped and in the evening the machines are underutilised, we thought let's start producing things that are needed by the community in our surrounding. And then 
we also started doing washable sanitary pads because a number of young girls in Africa are missing school days due to menstruation because they don't have anything. I grew up in Cuba and in Cuba we used to use cotton and newspaper. So I know, I know it's, it's a problem and more so in the rural area where predominantly the majority of the people are dependent on social grant or income earned from running a shipping and selling alcohol. So a number of them are going to miss our school days because they don't have the sanitary pads. The project you are talking about of sanitary pad, we were, uh, I was part of the pattern making for the sanitary pad from the scratch, all the sizes. We have, well, uh, we have small, medium and large. I'm part of the, I'm part of the, of everything that is happening here you, in the you, you, you were once a student? I was, uh, oh, I, I have been a student, but I'm also an apprentice. Apprentice means you are, you are learning and yeah. working at the same time. Yeah. I have been working in the production hub and also attending classes. After, after attending classes, I come and join the production hub. And later we realized the students that are coming to our center are hungry because some are walking 10 kilometers. Then we thought, let's start a garden so that we can give them maybe a vegetable soup, a salad. Later we realized this garden is growing and the community are now coming to buy things. And then we started offering agriculture. You are a teacher. In yes. the academy? Yes, definitely. What do you teach in here? So here I teach agriculture. This is a course in the school, but now this one is under production hub. So when, whenever you are teaching people, so there should be something on the ground to show an example that this is really what you are doing. More like a practical form? De definitely. Does it mean that you have the theory aspect too? You go to the class to teach? Yes. We go, we go in the class, we teach, we come out, we do practical outside, then we show them how things are being done. For example, like yesterday, we did transplanting there. Mm -hmm. So after now having the theory, so we come in the field, then we demonstrate how do we transplant. So which one is suitable for transplanting and which one does not suit for transplanting. Why is this course so important? This course is very much important because in Namibia, so we are not self-reliance when it comes to food security. So now we want to teach everybody so that everyone can able to have its own food. So we don't normally train for to work in industry, but we train so that everyone should stand on their own. Because now, currently now, we don't have a lot of work in Namibia. So for example, now, if you have your own land, you can grow your own tomato, your own green pepper, so you can make a business out of it. Are you a student here? Yes, I'm a student here. What are you studying? I'm studying agriculture, horticulture. Only horticulture? Yes. You're not a big fan of poultry? Uh, also poultry is additional. Traditional? Additional. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, how long have you been in this school? I have been here one year, two months now. Oh, but how long is the course? The course is one year, six months. One year, six months? Yes. So you're not done? Not yet. Three more months to go? Yes. And after three months, what are you going to do? Uh, I just want to have my own farm. Plant my own vegetables and provide my own food and help my family or make my own money. Wow. Before coming to this school, what were you doing? I was just home doing nothing, but then I came up with the idea of having my own business and the head of this school that there is also agriculture and agriculture is very good in our country you can make plants plant anything and sell to the nation wow you want to you want to feed your family or you want to feed the nation the nation and my family <laughs> but myself first <laughs> When the tourists want to go in the village, they want to be guided. And then we thought, why can't we also offer a tour guiding program? So now we offer four discipline, hospitality, clothing, agriculture, and tourist guiding. What drives you? It's the passion to support. Everybody is saying, 
you know, the government is saying we want to create 121 youth rural enterprises. Where will these enterprises are coming from if all of us are just building businesses in urban center? It's fulfilling for me. Everybody's come, coming to Angola, ask me, Hilia, you don't make money, but what drives you? I'm busy 24 seven, but that is fulfilling for me to see a young boy or a girl that come to our center with absolutely no hope or nothing and they walk out of our center to become one of the most most sought after employees in the industry so that gives me the um the drive it, it makes me excited to wake up every morning to do what i'm doing if you're not making more money or if you're not making a lot of money or the vision of the company is not to make money how do you fund the project we it's not to make money but is to make sure that we run it sustainably we, we run it sustainably if you ask me during covid if we were not in rural area i would have sold Angola. i would have sold Angola because it was tough it was tough but I met one of the successful uh, tour guides in Uganda and he said, Ilya, don't give up. I have four lodges in national parks in Uganda and I'm happy. Even up to now, we are thinking, can we also not maybe get a partner overseas who will be marketing our lodge and send the traffic to us because we're not making it. We're not making it. But yeah, I spend almost my whole time looking for opportunity for the center to be sustainable uh, because the tuition fee alone from the college side of the business will not make us break even. I'm also working on a concept to make Ongula as the place, if you come to Namibia, any tourist coming to Namibia looking for African cuisine, you don't need to go to Ghana to, to have Shito. You have to come to Angola. So if you come to Namibia and you are looking for real African cuisine, so we want Angola to be a place known for, um, for, for, for the African you know, cuisine. What has been the biggest challenge since you started this? Okay, you also supported the project because the courier shop is supporting the project for the sanitary pads. From the tourism side of things, being located in an area which is not among the classic Namibia tour, I don't understand who came up with classic Namibia tour or I don't know who came up with the 10 top destinations of Namibia, who said, if you don't have animals, you don't have the sea, you don't have the landscape, that's not tourism. That is my biggest challenge that the government is still stuck in the colonial ways of marketing a destination. So being located in off the beaten track is, it's a challenge. So that to me is one of the biggest challenges that the government, we, you're not in a conservancy, you are not in the classic Namibia tour, you are not in the June. To me, that is a challenge. And it keeps me awake every day of my life. And to you, the new dawn of tourism is beyond what lies and dunes. Yes. That's incredible. Yes. And um, I hope and believe that this video will change um, so many minds for them to choose um, this destination as a place to sleep. I think I've been here and I know that I'll tell the story better than anyone else. If you had a chance to change one thing in Namibia, what will it be? Uh, is to inform the world out today that Namibia is not only about animals and sea, but Namibia is about people. And when you come to Namibia, 
you need to come and meet people and one of the places to meet people is Ongula Homestead Lodge. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me and I really appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you. Oh,